They may take our lives, but they'll never take the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Sounds Irish. That's dumb. Need an education on how to grow your business? The Nice Guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Where the fuck is the recording thing? Hold on. All right, fire away. Hey, Nice Guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. I am talking fast today. My name is Strickland Bonner on the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler, because we are the Nice Guys on Business, because we have got a huge announcement, (laughs) Doug. Wow, that was really that was really good. So here's the announcement. Are you ready? I know I didn't give you any prep for this. We're going to record every show this week with this special announcement. Are you ready? Strictly? I think I'm ready. Wednesdays, every Wednesday, even though no matter what day I'm, we are actually recording this, and whatever day you're hearing this, Wednesday is Dialing for Doug Day. Okay, so dialing for Doug. Yes, we are going to between now and the end of time going to remind everybody first thing that we do that Wednesdays between 5 p.m. and 6 30 p.m. is dialing for Doug Day 410 340 6861. Do you know what that is, Strickland? Your phone number? That is my cell phone number. But you can't call like 4242 DG Doug because, by the way, nope. I tried calling 4242 DG Doug. Oh, I forgot this story. We're going to tell this. I was going to say we're going to nope. tell it tomorrow. After the we're going to tell the story after. yesterday. Hey, Doug, remember the funny story I told you about how the guy from uh, Dubai was trying to call and leave a message on yeah. your machine, but yeah. you actually answered and hung up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, that was a funny story. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Wednesdays, Nice Guy Community, is your day between 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Every Wednesday from now until the end of time, my phone will be available just for the Nice Guy Community to dial in and ask me anything. Talk to me about your business. Talk to me about your wife. Talk to me about your husband. Talk to me about your dog. Talk to me about your insurance experiences. It doesn't matter. Call me. If you want to chat about anything, it is Dialing for Doug Day, Wednesdays, between 5 p.m and 6.30 p.m., 410-340-6861. That is my number in the U.S. I don't know what the fuck the country code is, all right? So it might one. be zero, zero, one. one. Yeah. Okay, country code one. Whatever that even means, I have no idea. 410-340-6861. We will make this announcement. We'll be a lot quicker about it every day from now on, but we are making the announcement every day is dialing for Doug Day. So Five, I mean, I'm sorry. Gonna be, what's going to be different about this than 4242 DJ Doug that all right, let me. Let me explain what's going to be different about this than everything else that we have ever done on this show. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. We are going to be consistent every day. We are going to say, don't forget, dialing for Doug Day, Wednesdays between 5 and 630, 410-340-6861. Period. The end. And then we're going to move on to the rest of the show. We are going to consistently say this every day, Strickland. So right after you, welcome back, welcome back. We're going to do dialing for Doug, 410-340-6861. Anything so, that you want to talk. So why don't we do that like on a day that we're going to record an episode and we can have people call in during the episode? Well, you see, the issue is that so many things, we get so convoluted and we try to complicate things so much. Anybody wants to talk to me? We, If we happen to be recording at that time, great. If we don't, that's okay too. But I'm telling you, I want to be consistent with this. It's not because you have not been consistent. It's because we have been inconsistent with everything that we have ever done. That's not true. We haven't been totally inconsistent. We've got a very consistent uh, schedule of publishing and, I mean, we keep changing it, but it's consistent, you know. Um, (laughs) That's what uh, I mean. We just don't have a consistent something that, uh, yeah. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. Every day, what do you do at the intro of the show? Uh, Welcome back. Welcome back. Everybody loves it. Don't they love that? I suppose so. So why don't we do it? But, you know, we never <laughs> record on Wednesdays. Why don't, we, why don't we have call DJ Doug time Sunday nights when you, we usually are recording? And you know what? If we're not recording, people can still talk and shoot the shit with you. You know why? Why? I'm not available between 5 and 630 on every Sunday. I am available every Wednesday. All right, let's see. We'll five. see how this goes. I have cleared my schedule for the rest we'll see of how my this life. Goes, which, by the way, that's tonight, Wednesday, tonight. That's great. I Call will be available. I will be available. This is good because today is the Wednesday. Time, five and six thirty. Five and six thirty p.m. If Eastern you need me. Eastern Standard Time. Now, listen. Here is here is a couple of reasons why I would not pick up the phone. I'm talking to another nice guy community member. 
like that would ever happen. Like you'd be talking to one and somebody else would call. Let me tell you something. I have talked to a couple of podcasters that have done this Mm -hmm. consistently and they said this has changed the face of their podcast. It's engaged their community like no other activity has ever engaged their community before. Okay, let's see how it goes tonight. And by the way, that is 5 to 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Doug, do you realize, you know, different locations I have different to, times? I did try to make it at a time that would be at least not too ridiculously early or late for anybody. I know if we're talking to Australia, that's going to be 630 in the morning. I am prepared. I yeah. am prepared. Yes, I am. I won't be prepared at five o'clock in the morning. But you know what? If you call me, I will do my best to wake my ass up to answer the phone because you are that special to me, nice guy community. This okay, is going to be we, great. We're going to keep this intro short. So let's get to Gavin <laughs> and, and we can talk more about t- t- on tomorrow's show, which will okay. re- air yesterday. Uh, we can go <laughs> into more detail like that. Right. So today's uh, today's record, today's interview is with Gavin Zuklinski. Gavin is the founder of uh, Acuity Scheduling, an amazing scheduling program. The nice guy community, uh, we, do th- we use this actually as our scheduling program program we actually we, with all um what's it called uh transparency yes. we do have an affiliate link on our um uh, on our show notes uh but that actually isn't why we are having gavin on the show i'm having gavin on the show because this is just such a badass amazing scheduling program that he has created i want you to hear it and really love it uh whether you use us or not i'm certainly hoping if you use acuity as as your scheduling program you use it and you if you end up purchasing it, purchasing it you purchase it through us but even even if you don't, it's okay because I'll tell you, Acuity is that cool and I love it. But do us a favor. If you're going to do it, could you just do it through the link? It would make it a lot easier for us. But that is not why we're having him on the show. Cool guy, Gavin Zuklinski, uh, really challenging last name to pronounce. Uh, Strickland refuses to try to pronounce his last name. Because I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> you haven't been drinking tonight, have you? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I can start it? if you like. Yeah, you probably should go. It, when we record yesterday's episode, could you go and <laughs> grab a drink? It would be great. Sure. Just for you, Doug. I'll go do that right now, yesterday. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So uh, anything else that we want to get to before we get to the um, uh, interview? The promise statement? Uh, yeah. What is it? <laughs> yeah, do you have once it? again, as soon as you see, by the way, that's Doug's clue. As soon as he says, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. What is it? Do, do you want to do it? Strick, it means he doesn't have it in front of him. The no, problem statement is to provide a learning experience that is entertaining and add values to your life. And you know what? I didn't have it in front of me, but since I'm on a PC, I can get it up quickly. You on your Mac. <laughs> no, never mind. We've already decided it's user error. I cannot dig on Apple. It is user error. No, no, it's not. It's definitely not. We have so many great topics we have to cover yesterday. Can we get to recording that so we can get yeah, to Yeah, let's Gavin? get to that. Okay, Gavin Z- Zuklinski, right? <laughs> yep, there you go. I got it right? Yeah, you did. Zuklinski. Oh, I can't wait to hear more about all, all, <laughs> Audacity, all phonic. <laughs> it's all the A's. I'm missing it. Acuity, acuity. Acuity, because it really helps us so much. So... Let's get to the interview. Yeah, there we go. Gavin Zuklinski, Acuity Scheduling. Let's do it. If you sometimes struggle with your schedule and need help uh, with time management, uh, our guest today, uh, Gavin Zuklinski, is a match for you. A master of getting your life in order and all things that are detailed. Well, at least that's the way I see him. And not only that, he's a heck of a nice guy, an entrepreneur and founder of Acuity Scheduling. Uh, Welcome to the uh, Nice Guys on Business podcast, Gavin. Hey, thanks for having me on here. My my pleasure. So it's interesting because I think that I I don't know if I accidentally ran into you just because uh, I I was uh, using your program or if someone that we know in common introduced us. But I'll tell you something, Acuity's pretty cool. And, and you got, and you started this about about ten years ago. So why not? How did it? How did it even evolve? I mean, I know that there's probably a whole story, a backstory behind how Acuity came to be. So, can you spend just a moment talking about Acuity, what you do, and how it evolved, and then we can get into some of the uh, some of the specifics. Yeah, totally. So I've been thinking about scheduling for a while, and it's all been thanks to my mom. Actually, she's a <laughs> massage therapist, and she she spends her day day to day just worrying about appointments. So uh, I remember we were uh, in the car once on a long road trip, uh, and we were talking back and forth together. And she was getting a bunch of calls from clients, just people trying to cancel appointments and reschedule and everything else. Uh, and as I saw her going through all of this, I knew that there just had to be a better way to do this. And that's where Acuity came from. So it was originally built for, for her so that she could manage her appointments and really just um, 
take away that management so that clients could schedule themselves, reschedule, cancel, and that in the in the end, um, she could focus more on what she was best at and clients would just show up to appointments. So it has evolved from just her like 2006, um, 2007 to now tens of thousands of other businesses who care about appointments just as much as her. So um, yeah, it's been a long journey, but it all started with uh, Kim Zuklinski. So did you... Did- <laughs> did you um, did you did it come from? Uh, was it originally a mobile app, or was it something that you always thought would be a uh, a desktop style? I mean, I you know when I or I think of a good idea, it's like okay, well, I want to institute that idea, and then you have mm-hmm. to come up with a scalable idea to make it grow so that it's just beyond the massage business. So for mm-hmm. for your mom, so how did that how did that come to be? Yeah. Um, well, back then, mobile apps did not exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I remember this? when I first made it, uh, it was actually when I was first developing it, it was still uh, a little bit pre-iPhone too. Uh, and then when Acuity, um, so it was originally just built as a web app for um, uh, everyone. Um, actually, part of the purpose too was to hopefully attract some more customers to my web development business that I was doing at the time that completely failed. I did not get a single client for that, but oh my, gosh. Uh, my mom yeah, my mom really enjoyed using the scheduler and I, I ended up putting it online too. It was something that I intended that other people would sign up for from the very beginning. So I just put it online as, as an appointment scheduler. I had looked at what all other products were out there at the time and they were just all really like bulky and kludgy and doing a lot of things and not doing any one thing well and expensive on top of that. So I felt like there was room for something that was just really just focused on appointment scheduling. And it was never even focused on the massage vertical. It was just something that worked really well. And in the end, I'm happy that we ended up doing that since it's been a it's been a challenge to try to bring that to everybody since there are so many diverse needs. But when you look at the whole ecosystem of all the businesses out there, it's really incredible how many diverse businesses um, when it comes to appointment scheduling operate really in the same way how they run with classes or um, just schedule one-on-one appointments and the different things that they they need as far as like customization making sure that reminders go out um, like in a timed series sort of like you do for your podcast too yeah um, yeah and that's how and that's how I originally came into uh, into loving this so much because it wasn't just to schedule my appointment I mean just imagine everybody that, that's listening to this imagine if you are Scheduling an appointment, it usually isn't, it's not just, I'm going to send an email to you, Gavin, and then Gavin is going to respond to me and all is uh, wonderful with the world and we have a schedule on, you know, Monday, the whatever. It, it's it's go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then you're figuring, okay, well, what time is specific? And then you know what happens, things change. And then when you change it, that's another back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then there's a whole series of communications and then the tone and then confirmation and all that. It it got to be that each appointment was probably taking me legitimately 20 to 30 minutes between all of the emails that I would send out and for everybody that came on the show. And it's not just my show, but it was everybody I had an appointment with outside of the show too, the 15-minute little coaching calls, that I, the intro calls. So it... it What's so cool about it is it kind of takes all of that and it, it bundles it into into one, but it all falls within the guise of a um, of a scheduling program. So well done from that uh, from that perspective. Yeah, and you've done a great job setting up yours too. I was really impressed too by how um, so we provide a lot of customization and things like that. Um, and honestly, I'm just happy if all businesses just use schedulers, so I don't have to pick up the phone and call you or anything. Right, right. But when it, yeah, when it comes to like communication too, it's it's the scheduling the appointment, but then there's always those questions beforehand, and I'm sure you'd get it a lot. Like, how am I going to contact you? Um, what are we going to talk about? Right. And you trying to like get get people to actually actually care about their internet and sound quality and all of that beforehand that you don't have to remember to send all those manually that can just be set up so I get the message from you automatically hey two days until your interview one day until your interview right Um, right. and then yeah and then so the whole scheduling is taken care of and but then all of the prep work too so that when uh, if you're a business when your clients come or uh, interviewees when they come on they're actually prepared for it and they have all of their questions answered so they get a better experience Um, uh, and then you get a better experience too, since you don't have to worry about sending all of that or dealing with that back and forth. And you can focus on really having quality time with me now by spending more time doing research, by um, 
being more engaged with me now instead of worrying about that minutia that's the same for every single client or interviewee well and we're all in a business if we if we systemize at all what we're doing and we all should be systemizing what we are what we're doing because there's something that to be said about having a this is step one to step two you know through step 117 or whatever it is that you do with your business what's so interesting about how you put the schedule together is it's not just a schedule management program it, it may fall under that category but the idea behind it is it's things like I don't know I'd have to pull down from Amazon okay here's a good microphone to use if you're if you don't if you've never been on a podcast before and although after you do it a couple of times you're like okay well here's what my email looks like <laughs> but still you have to attach a PDF and you might want to put a, a YouTube link on there so people can see you know what other videos have looked like if we've done this before and there was just so many different things that were that were all coming together it, it was challenging. It wasn't just a matter of scheduling the appointment. It was all the other stuff, like you said, the minutia that's involved. <laughs> it's not that, that it's not important. It's really important. But if you do that with everybody, uh, as we all need to with whatever our businesses are. Um, the other thing I thought was really cool, and, and and I know we're spending a lot of time talking about this specific product, but but um, but I just wanted to just touch on this for a moment because the relationship building aspect of what Acuity does is critical too because it's not just – that you are building, um, you know, you're building a schedule. You're also you're helping promote the products and services that you have. You're doing the follow up because it's not just the the appointment; it's after the appointment. There's a you know you can send a follow up letter as well. It also can help you collect the money that's involved if you're selling products or services online too. How did all of that come to be as well? Does your mom did your mom have a bunch of like post sale kind of things that she wanted, or is this just something that's evolved through the course of you building Acuity? Yeah, so payments was definitely baked in from the very beginning because a business can't run unless you're making money. So that had to be there. Um, same with things like being able to customize intake forms and all of that. Some of the other things have evolved just by listening to our customers. We have a really great relationship with everybody. So your feedback um, has helped drive the product and helped us uh, build new features and all of that. Um, but with everything, we try to focus on making sure that we're not um, getting getting too bloated over time because that can totally happen to products and I don't want to turn into one of the ones that I disliked at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah, um, down, yeah. So yeah, so our, our, our intent has always been to try to focus on things that make appointment scheduling better and where features are better uh, paired with appointment scheduling too. So things like payments, even though you could really do that outside, that one is so tightly ingrained that way you can verify and have deposits and and manage all of that too but um our driving intent with all of this was to get it to the point where for somebody like my mom who or anybody else if a guidance counselor a life coach whose day-to-day -day revolves around appointments that we can take away some of the brunt of uh, what when clients initially find you to leading up to the appointment and then uh, hopefully a little bit after too so that you as the business owner can focus on what you're best at um, and leave all all of the uh, all of the setup and everything right, else dealing right. with clients to that so that that's been what's driven us and then also making sure too that you as the business owner I don't know I really feel like your brand should be the thing that gets forward um, not ours so whenever we add new features we always try to make them nice and customizable um, which has led to some like nice unintended side effects too like uh, yeah. being able to customize emails I feel is just something that you should do but then it turns out I'd wasn't even thinking about how useful it is for prepping and sending instructions and and all of that. Type oh, of and stuff, it's great so. from a branding perspective. You can put your oh, yeah. your logo right on the uh, on the emails as well. Mm -hmm. Let's um let's leave Acuity behind for a second, but uh but kind of talk about just your general philosophy on um, on service and support. I know that you've got to be a huge believer in A plus customer support because I've I've just I've witnessed it as a customer before we even set up an interview for the show, and that's probably one of the reasons I I wanted to have you on the show is because. When I sent an email to support at Acuity, um, you responded personally. And I know that you have a company that's bigger than just you. <laughs> so share, share, share like how, how the philosophy of your support, um, you know, that, that whole process in your customer service world. Talk about the importance of that as a part of growing a business, regardless of whether it's Acuity or any business out there. 
Yeah, totally. So it is more than just me. Um, there's 15 of us now. But I, I don't know. So uh, Acuity started out uh, way back 2006, 2007. And when I did that, it was a part-time thing. It wasn't something that I intended to build into a large business or any of that. That came by accident. I had a data about the time that I loved. So while I was doing that, um, I, I kept this as a part-time thing until 2013 when it became big enough that I had to you know, decide between the day job that I loved or go with Acuity full-time. Um, but during... Uh, uh, during those eight years, um, I had uh, I was the one that was dealing with support, and I was the one that was talking to customers every day. And through there, I, I stumbled a bit, but I ended up learning um, the best ways to deal with people, and that everybody's feedback was what really drove the product. So it was an incredibly valuable thing. So I always wanted a, a relationship with that and also getting back to like who my first user was too and trying to treat people um, as if they were family too. So in a way where, you know, like I, uh, email is wonderful. It's a really scalable thing and it helps us, um, uh, it helps us uh, maintain a low cost service um, by offering that. Uh, but at the same time, how some people do it can feel so impersonal too. So I've yeah. taken, yeah, we've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best ways to deal with people and make it like so that you're actually interacting with a human on the other end. And if you just think about it as if I'm trying to help you as a friend um, and like I had been doing for years with many of our clients and helping out them directly, I feel like as we scale up, we should keep that friendliness too. And uh, I personally feel that to be able to scale the company for support, too, I still need to stay involved. So that's why I still answer a ton of things in the inbox um, and randomly pick out ones that I can like maintain the pulse and make sure that customers are all happy all of the time, too. I, I enjoyed being the random guy that you actually ended up taking the call because, it, again, it, it meant a lot to me that um, – that in and I didn't even know that Gavin was the owner of the company Nice Guy Community. I just thought that he was somebody that was <laughs> – in support, and then I'm, I'm doing a little research on the company because I thought, wow, that's really a company that's very invested in their customers. Even just a simple email response is great, but but more of a, hey, why don't you pick up the phone and call if you have any issues? Here's the number. I'm happy to help. You know, that was the kind of stuff that's like you don't even you don't get that anymore. You know, it's I think that that's one of the biggest challenges in business today is how do you how do you connect and how do you engage? And are there some other cha are there other challenges that you find are pretty commonplace in in businesses like yours, Gavin, that um, that that companies are just falling short of the mark on? Oh, yeah. And actually, with me, too, I love when customers reply and said, that was a, such a wonderful answer. You should tell your manager um, that, <laughs> that you should get a promotion. I'm like, cool, thanks. thanks. <laughs> I'll let myself know. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, duly noted. Um, uh, yeah, so to me, I don't know, I think that when it comes to customer support too, there are a couple of things that, that people get wrong is, uh, one, before all, you need to have um, fast and accurate answers to everything and, and do it in a way that scales with respective to whatever your business is. is. Um, but to be able to do that, you have to get rid of all of the gunk that is like, we're helping people schedule appointments by getting rid of all of the setup and all of that. It's the same goes for support support where we do we do a bit of internal tooling to make things really fast that we can get access see changes to your accounts and do all of that with really good speed too so that we're not wasting time on connecting to a bunch of different tools and then also trying to get rid of all of those common questions like we're really aggressive about when we see patterns and questions trying to fix the core feature add things to our help uh, clean up the copy on the website so it's a little bit more clear and changing all of those things that when we get down to it, like the questions that come into us are actually valuable and interesting questions as opposed to those mundane things that you might want to do a canned reply. I always feel like if we have canned replies, which we, we don't, we generally have very, very few just for a couple of specific situations, mm -hmm. um, it's a smell that something is wrong with your support. If you're spending so much time saying the same thing to customers, um, it starts to become robotic no matter how hard you try. So try to fix that problems so that customers don't even you know need to email in about those types of things. So as a, uh, as a business owner, as a guy that owns this company that, that, um, that is very automated, what do you see as the next? Um, the next technology frontier. What's you know? Do you see video as being huge? I mean, do you see video becoming a part of the scheduling apps? Do you do you see, or maybe there's a, a whole different frontier that you see? What's next? 
Oh, man, that's a big question. So we are looking at a ton of different things. I mean, there's a lot of trends now with uh, chat-driven interfaces, um, which is a very interesting thing when it comes to business, too, because um, like we were talking about, there's a lot of how how people chat with businesses um, and uh, just leading up to scheduling an appointment yeah, and there's yeah. a lot and with how we fit into there to automate that so i think that there's some interesting things there um yeah with with video too we're seeing more and more people are starting up their business and working remotely too so video is definitely a fantastic one for there but there's a ton of different things that go along with just being a remote worker too like dealing with people in different time zones and is is a big issue as you as we get uh, more nomadic uh, business folks too dealing like when you travel and all of that we're having to deal with more and more as time goes by so i think that those will be really interesting issues going forward um and on top of that, too, we're not exploiting mobile as much as we could be. Um, so just and I, I don't see many people in the space doing that where you get so many like such rich sensors on where you are mm-hmm. and being able to take payments and like knowing that the times when things are going on. So there are some things that we're looking at in that space, too, that I think will be really, really interesting going forward. Now, I and know only getting better as technology goes on. Yeah, too. and that's so true. I was about to say that I, I know that technology is making things so much easier to get uh, more in depth with each of the products and the services that you offer. Um, do you see, and I know you are primarily, you know, you're in the in the scheduling world without a specific vertical market that you that mm-hmm. you work with, but do you see yourself at all going into the, well, I know a lot of people when they schedule their appointments, they're now doing it through video. So we're going to add a video uh, module onto, uh, onto Acuity. Or, you know, I know that when I called you and I said, well, I get a lot of information. I fill out these um, question and answers that I send as a part of my, uh, as a part of my scheduling email that go out, um, but you had given me a, you sent me over to a, a link. I think that uh, that Google Docs or one of the or Google mm-hmm. offers. Do you see yourself at all developing or getting involved in some specific um, components that you guys aren't doing right now? Uh, yeah, great question. So we. Like, like like you mentioned too, our, our focus is definitely on appointment scheduling, and then sometimes with those, our, our general approach is to try to direct folks or um, to different services that integrate with us, or create an integration on our own to go with them. So like for uh, video, I think that it's a really interesting thing. But then there's um, Zoom and GoToMeeting uh, uh, and Join Me, which are all fantastic products that we integrate with. And then by pairing Acuity with them, by integrating, um, we've been able to not focus as much on the video bit, but then and focus on what it means to schedule a meeting through them so that way things can just be included in emails and calendar invites and all of that. So our general approach has been if there's somebody else who's doing it and they're doing a fantastic job, just let them keep going and we'll integrate <laughs> right. with it. Right. Um, just because there, yeah, there are so many different cases. And like you were talking about before, like systematizing your business, there's once you start to go down that path, there's so much that you can do just to connect acuity. So we've tried to be really open uh, and and exposing all of our data and making it really easy for people to integrate with us so that they can run their business however is best for them to. And that's been our general approach. And then as we go forward, Forward, though there are some different things where like we have integrations for it but it's a lot of work to set up mm-hmm. um, and when it comes to those types of things those are the ones that i see us slowly getting more and more into as we're perfecting appointment scheduling more and more just to make it easier to to run your business and to get everything working so that you can really get back to focusing more on your clients and less on connecting to different apps too no and totally love uh love the uh love the program it makes it so much easier for not just scheduling but like i said all those other things i don't have to worry about the follow-up and and not that i don't worry about it but i know that there is at least something another touch point that is going out to my uh to my guests and to people that i set up appointments with so that's always good too um but again let's put aside your uh the acuity hat for a second and and Mm -hmm. answer these next five questions that i have and these are this is the rapid fire fire portion of our uh, of our show here. I'm going to ask you five questions. I'm going to do my best not to step on any of your answers so give you the uh, the ability to answer them without my uh, without my assistance or without my <laughs> I mean, it should be more like without my interference. Oh, I'm excited. Let's and, do this. And uh, and uh, just give me what your your knee jerk response to each one of these five are. So um Is this like a psychological test? Yes, are totally. You- this is now the disc theory. <laughs> no, I don't you know, I don't know. I felt like I felt like I wanted to make some things that were pretty in common to to a lot of the the people that or to all of the people that come on the show i think for the last 
maybe three or four months I've been doing this, and um, I get a lot of very interesting answers. So we're trying to come up with some compilation or maybe some ebook that we're going to end up uh, releasing as a part of this and having uh, having our guests be quoted. But I appreciate you asking the question. So here are the five questions, uh, twenty seconds or less, with each one of the answers, and um, just your your knee jerk response to it. So mm-hmm. question number one: be uh, be relatable, um, Gavin. What do you what do you suck at? <laughs> I suck at management. Uh, I, I am really bad at managing people. Something I'm trying to work on, but it takes time. Wow. Okay. I, see, I wouldn't think that because you, your crew, your team is just so together. I mean, they really they really are. But uh, you probably have put the right people, um, as J- uh, Jim Collins would say, put the right people on the bus and you, um, you, you kind of let them do their thing because you've hired the right people. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been really lucky with that. And we've had thousands of people apply each time we put out a job posting. So we've been able to get fantastic folks. Oh, that's great. Okay, so there I, I told you I wasn't going to step on you. Now I have already. So uh, <laughs> next one, question two, be transparent. Um, when you originally got moving in the beginning, how did you get how did you first get going? How did you pay your bills? Uh, well, I priced the service to be $10 a month when my hosting bill was $9 a month, and that was the only expense. I apparently valued my time at zero, though. Um, <laughs> True. So first customer, we were profitable. Okay, excellent. Uh, be confident. Uh, what do you do as an entrepreneur that's as good as it gets? Oh, I mean, honestly, I I just enjoy the company that I built and making sure that uh, everybody in it can like live flexibly. And that's actually one of the things that I'm I'm proud about having built the company with the culture that we have. Nice. Uh, be humble. This is number four. Be humble. What experts did you need to call upon to make make shit happen in the beginning when shit wasn't happening? <laughs> oh, it's gone in phases. At first, it was technological, and then it went into business and marketing. Um, and throughout all of that, Amazon.com, uh, my list, everything going to my Kindle has been a fantastic resource. Oh, yeah. Isn't that so true? I mean, I use the masters, and I have many of them on my shelves. I'm looking at them right now. There's probably 100 plus books on those shelves that I've that I've gone back to. I'm like, I remember reading something about how to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Be realistic. Last one. Be realistic. Uh, where are you going to be in 90 days and and how far do you think that you can see really realistically into the future oh geez 90 days well uh i have my first kid due the end of january so Ah. probably sleepless and home and hopefully not working on acuity that much yeah that's cool very cool well from a personal perspective that that is great and you know that when you when you've discovered that you really don't think that you're a good manager of people but when you go into that um, maternity and fraternity um, uh, part of your life with the kid you'll discover that you probably are a much better manager of people than you actually thought because they're doing a good job for you without you having to even be there <laughs> yeah hopefully that will really be the test uh, how far do you think that you can see into the into the future? I mean, if you had to look at forecasting your business, um, what do you see down the road? Oh man, honestly, I do. Uh, we do feature planning at most nine months out. Um, I think about a year out or two, but um, actually, I found the best benefits for us have come from not planning too far in advance. That way, we can react to the environment and we don't get stuck into one way of thinking about features or development or anything else. So there are some longer term ones just by necessity of it, but most of the time, I try to avoid that and have plenty of free time. No, oh, that's great. That's a great answer and nice guy community just so you know we're going to put all of um all of gavin's contact information right in the uh, in the show notes we've uh you know in all transparency we've been a uh, an affiliate of the show of uh, of acuity for the last couple of months and and i truly am a believer i'm not just a guy that's pushing their product i'm a guy that actually uses their product and really believe in the product too so <laughs> gavin uh hats off to you man and your crew you you guys do a do an excellent job i love it Thank you so much. That's really great to hear. So uh, one other question for you. you. Have your cell phone anywhere near you? Oh, I think I do. Yeah. All right. If you have your cell phone, is it a, uh, an iPhone or something inferior? <laughs> it is an iPhone. Excellent. Okay. Uh, go to your, your picture app for a second. Tell me what's the last thing that you took a picture of. Ooh, this is a great. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it is my cat wearing a MailChimp knit hat. <laughs> That's a good one. Did you send it to MailChimp? Uh, no, not yet, man. She was like struggling as I put it on and purring at the same time. And then she just started. I, she seemed to really enjoy it and dislike it at the same time. So mm-hmm. I have to give that one another go. Okay. Oh, also my dog. And oh, uh, 
Oh, did you get, you put it on your dog too? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It didn't quite fit on him. Uh, he's a <laughs> little bit bigger, but he loved it too. Uh, and go to, wearing clothes in my house. Go to your go to your texting app. What are the what's the last text message you sent and received? Oh jeez. Um, let's see. My oh my last text message was uh, oh this is a very boring one to my wife uh, asking about if we had a signed agreement with our PEO if I could get a copy of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Excellent. She, she's uh, she's interested in that. What, now, help me with a PEO. What is PEO? Uh, what is it? Professional Employer Organization. So um, we use uh, for dealing with employees and payrolls and all of that. We, we use a PEO, um, Just Works, um, helps simplify running the business a lot. And my wife actually is part of Acuity. She helps with the management or some of the admin and HR and that type of thing. I love it. So you you totally are through and through a systems kind of person. You're not, uh, you're not just um, speaking the speak you walk the walk as well i try to <laughs> all right so we'll make sure we put all the information about uh gavin's company on uh on the show notes and uh, and links there and but gavin if somebody wanted to reach out to you directly how would they do that are, are you through twitter or f- facebook or what's the best way to reach you specifically <laughs> Oh, man, me, I'm really bad on social media. We have it for our company. But if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Gavin Zuklinski. I mean, or you can always go to uh, acuityscheduling.com. If you contact our support, they'll forward it to me. But that's uh, A-C-U-I-T-Y scheduling.com. And I'm Gavin at acuityscheduling.com if you wanted to reach out to me directly, too. And he's being very humble, although he says he doesn't do well on uh, social media. Every time I've reached out now, somebody may have forwarded it over to him, but I've gotten a response response back Gavin just so, you, just, just so you know so you actually you are good at it fantastic people on my team that helped me with that a humble guy a successful guy and a wonderful guy and uh, and a great guest on the nice guys on business podcast thanks uh, Gavin Suklinski for being a part of the uh, of the show today Thank you so much for having me on here. It was a total pleasure. Yeah, nice guy community. Never underestimate the uh, the power of nice. Again, special thanks to Gavin for being on the show. All information will be in the uh, in the show notes. Uh, Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Because it's such a fine line between stupid and clever. <laughs> <laughs>